This is an amazing coil winding machine built by Ralph VK3ZZC. Now tell us about it Ralph. This is my implementation of the Morco Coil Master, a machine which I coveted in the late 60s and early 70s. Its claim to fame is that it can wind honeycomb coils, which it sort of can. Um, I wanted one of these and went into the city one day with my pocket money saved up, all the $15, and discovered to my absolute horror that uh, the asking price was $75, which was in those days about the uh, a weekly wage, and a fairly good weekly wage of a labouring man. So no, I had to forget this ambition. So uh, 50 years later, I thought, nah, nah, bugger that, I've always wanted one, I'm going to build one from scratch. And this is built from scratch, and I think even more remarkably for those people who would like to build machinery in their home amateur workshop, you can. This was done without benefit of a mill or without benefit of a lathe. So all the parts were handmade with a file and the most advanced tool I have at my disposal is a cheap $50 Chinese drill press. That's it. <laughs> um, it is all built from scrap pieces of brass that I have found in dumpsters um, over the years. And the only parts that I did not make myself are the bevel gears, as that is well beyond my craft. Uh, the turns counter, which is just a, a $2 Rockby special um, turns counter. What else didn't I make? Um, that's about it. So, how does... Let's, let's see if we can work out how it actually works. So I suppose it's... Do we start with the wire? Um, or do we start with the finished product and work backwards? Oh, look, it's all the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, or well, do we start with the crank? We'll start with the crank and, and work forward. So... And so we have here, this is rather it's, interesting. It's not a circle, it's not an oblong. No, it's a cam. And the cam is my attempt. And we can see here there's a collection of cams um, along the machine for different styles of coil wind and for experiments. This so far, this pattern of cam uh, seems to be the most successful one so far. But uh, I'm still trying to find the, the, the optimum cam design for winding the honeycomb coil. Mm -hmm. And if you focus a little closely on the coil at hand, you can see it is sort of kind of working. Yes. And for, I would think for most amateur applications that's actually good enough. But of course I'm, I'm striving to uh, recreate the uh, correct patterns you would find on the old-fashioned RF chokes and small... Uh, low frequency coils that you find in legacy radios. So we have um, a, a ratchet gear here. This is the first gear that I have ever cut uh -huh. by hand. Yes, it is possible. So how did you get the design? Is there a certain formula? No. This is all we're trying to work things out from first principles. Uh, the the bevel gears I found at uh, um, a the most recent uh, Rosebud Spark Fest, mm. and I saw the a pair of gears and some axles on a table, and I thought, oh, uh, ooh, uh, I don't need more junk. I don't need <coughs> junk. And the little voice that started kicking and also started kicking me in the butt along the lines of, if you don't buy this now, you will forever regret it. So I bought it, <laughs> and I thought, I've got to do something with it. So um, this forms the a very essential part of the mechanism. Uh, the ratchet is to prevent the thing going in reverse mm -hmm. and more to protect the turns counting okay, yep. machine because they don't tolerate going backwards. No. Uh, on the output cam, of course, we see the turns counter, which is just a, uh, a door, you know, a people door counter um, put to other use, which you can buy from Rockby and other part supplies for a few mm. dollars. What we have here, um, we've got a couple of mechanisms. In the original advertisement for the Morco Coil Winder, it featured these cones in a very unclear photograph. 
Uh, the cones you might think were cut on a lathe. No, they were not. These were cut by hand. It is possible. Um, you can see this is a very plausible cone, and that was my first attempt at cutting a cone by hand. It's good enough. It works. So not even with a drill and then a file? No. Or, or by hand? No, this is by hand, with a file. Nothing more. Uh, the mechanism, which the reciprocating part of the mechanism, we see here... Oh, I, I didn't make the ball bearing there, obviously, which is the cam follower. But uh, the, the cam housing is, is cut by hand from a, uh, a lump of brass. The, the reciprocating axle, um, I deliberately chose to make that from steel, mm -hmm. as this has to slide back and forth in brass bearings, and it's better if the reciprocating um, element was harder than the bearing material. Mm -hmm. So brass on brass mm -hmm. won't go back and forth very nicely, yeah. but steel on brass will. Uh, this mechanism is the part is the, the business which handles or manages the flow of wire. Mm. So we have a, sort of a, a needle eye uh, which positions the wire, the wire duct, which is a hollow mm. brass tube, thing backwards and forwards. The eye is completely adjustable. The eye is a piece of uh, stainless steel wire. This business here, what this does, you can see this is a wire guide, um, this is cut from a, a teflon. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this arrangement, <coughs> there's a screw here which when screwed down, inside here is a pellet of beeswax. Oh. <laughs> the beeswax comes from a, a slice of Edam cheese which is available to you from your local deli. And this applies beeswax to the wire to help it bind uh, better in the final coil, otherwise being enamelled wire, it's very loose mm. and wants mm. to slip. And that, that's, that's, that's all uh, this, this arrangement here, it's just to apply a little bit of beeswax to the wire. We have here um, the, the guide which well, basically ensures that this moves perpendicular to the plate and doesn't tend to rotate out of place. Uh, spring, which uh, applies restorative force to the cam follower. The axle holding the wire spools, and you might see here I have extra reserve of wire. Uh, different chucks mm -hmm. for winding different styles of coil. Uh, there's a spring here which provides a settable amount of back tension on the spool. Otherwise, if the spool is loose, being wire, it just wants to go spring. Mm, mm. So this this spring here supplies a, a settable amount of tension on the spool to stop the spool unspooling itself spontaneously. Um, and again, we have more spare spools, more spare chucks. We can see we can do up down to four millimeter coil mm. forms here. And this is something uh, people might find amusing, a supply of spare screws. Mm. When I looked inside my um, late mother's very old German sewing mm. machine, I found at the bottom of the chassis mm. was a supply of spare <laughs> screws because they use custom mm. screws. You, you couldn't go out and mm. buy faff sewing machine screws anyway. So they generously had a little shaft where they had a bank of spare screws. And there's a danger thing there. Oh, look, we, we can't, um, clearly we have to um, wear, um, you know, helmets and eye protection mm. when using this machine. And uh, I, I have found a number of legacy stickers from... Uh, uh, the property of the Commonwealth of Australia. So you might get a knock on the door. Uh, the, might, from the uh, Department of Supply, yes. no less. And here, um, apparently uh, Entecott sort of England who make uh, mm. sieves also here and there's there's very dangerous voltages uh, mm. to be found in this apparatus um, the shafts came I was looking at ham fests for quarter inch brass shaft it's very hard to find now um, but I found enough for this project and more to the reason the bevel gears, which really is the cornerstone of this mm. particular project, they had 
required quarter inch shaft, mm -hmm. so I had to look out for this. Otherwise, the rest of the shafts, the, the, the six millimeter uh, center ground um, precision shaft, came from hard rubbish collection. So every discarded um, inkjet printer, of which mm -hmm. there's a super abundance mm -hmm. of, contains copious quantities of this beautiful sh polished shaft mm -hmm. which normally costs if you actually bought this mm -hmm. from a machinery mm -hmm. supplier is nearly a thousand dollars a meter for this material but otherwise it's free courtesy mm -hmm. of hard rubbish collections um, the base plate uh, recycled from a piece of thrown out machinery as you can see <laughs> and you can still hear see um, the remains of the layout mm. circles. There's only two bodges. Mm. Only two? Only two. And you might see here, uh, see that yellow, that, that's beer can, mm. a bit of beer can here. Uh, the bearings, um, this is, this is um, extruded brass stock mm. um, recovered from mm. a builder's skip. And this is, this little shim stock is just required there to set the the, the faces of the bearing blocks mm. so that they're perfectly mm. parallel otherwise the, mm. the shafts will bind so I needed that so here we are my recreation of the Morco Coil Master the Morco Coil Master wonderful thanks Ralph a pleasure the pleasure is mine thank you enjoy these videos want to start in amateur radio well check out my books Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.